Fusion just told me before we start the camera that I'm gonna probably offend someone. I'm okay with that. Because it's not every day that you get excited <laughs> about poke speakers. So poke speakers. So personally speaking, I never saw poke speakers as like a hi-fi speaker brand or hi-fi, you know, I don't you don't you don't hear people say poke speakers, what a great hi-fi, you know, speakers, right? Like you don't hear that. It's usually for like home theater, right? Yeah. I mean you're the home theater guy, so Yeah, that's that's a stereotype. Yeah. But I think we're breaking that stereotype today because we have the reserve series and this is the R200 bookshelf speakers. Now we do have the floor sander, but that'll be for another video. There is a smaller bookshelf, the R100. Please don't ask me about those because I have not heard of them. Don't know how they stack up, but I can tell you about the R200 today. The R200 is a magnificent speaker, perhaps one of the best speakers under $1,000. And I never thought I would say that about a poke speaker, but it stacks up so well even compared to some of the budget options that we've reviewed on this channel, like Triangle, Klipsch, Kef, Elac, you name it. There is a lot of competition. competition, And the level is high now for that category. Despite that, I think Poke has really done it. For under $1,000, exactly 750 US dollars MSRP, and you probably can get a better deal because it's poke speakers and you can get, you know, discounts and sales and stuff like that. Wink, wink. But, you know, considering all that, this speaker is incredible. Like, like one of the best buys, best bargains of hi-fi. I, I think it's also very underrated because a lot of the hi-fi enthusiasts are like, eh, poke speakers, eh. They're and overlooking it. I completely understand. I was like that. Tujin was like that. And I'm not trying to be like, you know, for those of you that are poke fans, I'm not trying to be like, you know, bashing poke or trying to be this overprivileged, you know, brat, audiophile, audiophile <laughs> brat. <laughs> but that's just the way it is. It's the, it's the branding, right? And poke never went for that. But I think this time they did. They're also great for home theater, by the way, because they have a matte finish. Kind of side thought. But what drives Tujin and me crazy is when home theater companies have these finishes like gloss black but those are reflective surfaces that blinds you when you're watching a movie. It's reflective. So these are matte black and they have a very nice texture and they have a quite unique feel to them, which like it, it feels rigid and it's actually elegant. The longer you have it, the more you appreciate the finish. At first glance, it looks a bit bland. Now, the good news is that if you're a little bit more of like that vinyl guy, they have do, do have the wanna finish, mm -hmm. and they also have the white finish if you're looking for a white speaker. So they do have those finishes available. And again, stacking up to those high, uh, you know, high performing bookshelf speakers like Elac, Kev, Klipsch. Quads. <laughs> quads. And so I was very disappointed and I, was, I thought to myself, Dare I say, dare I say, and I know you, someone is gonna use yeah, everything is the best, but this is perhaps not, not the best, but one of the best speakers under $1,000. Even in comparison to the king of tonality, you know, triangles and so on. Now, I would say this, each individual speakers like Elac, Kev, you know, Klipsch, all these speakers do have their own benefits and own strengths when it comes to their own respective design. Poke speakers on the, on the other hand is perhaps one of the best all-rounders, meaning from bass to treble, from sound staging to imaging, for home theater usage to stereo usage, it is an extremely good rounder. And if you're unsure about your taste or if you're kind of like that guy who wants a more balanced sound instead of one specific set of, uh, set of sound, then this speaker is the right one for you. Because this is not an audiophile speaker. If you want like a audiophile speaker that gives you a lot of detail, you know, at the same time good balance but decent bass, that's Elax. If you want like treble, sparkle, excitement, you know, sound stage, horn, you know, taste of a horn design, that's Klipsch, right? We're talking about the RP600M. Yeah. A lot of you guys know this. If you want precise imaging, that's Kef, dual concentric design. So there's a lot of choices out there. 
No, I don't know about the quality S2s. I didn't like those. <laughs> well, That's true. It's true. It's true. But you may like them. So there's benefits in each design. Now, what this is good at is mimicking, and not even mimicking, that's a wrong word, like a budget version, a very good budget version of what I associate with the best speaker of all time, the Bacard S400. And why do I say this? Because this phrase, you've heard exactly the same phrase when I did the S400 review. A bookshelf speaker, that sounds like a floor stander. And this is what the Pokes do. It has bass, tremendous amount of bass for a bookshelf speaker. And we're talking about in comparison to some of the floor standards, in comparison to some of the uh, you know higher end bookshelves, this has bass, but it doesn't have just amount of bass, it has controlled bass. It's quality bass. And that has to do with their port technology in the back, they call it like the export or something like that. You can read more up on it on their website, but from my understanding, it gets rid of the port noise. And you know what speaker that drives me nuts with port noises that Tujin actually likes? The PSB B600. Oh boy. So this speaker, in my opinion, produces uh, similar, if not the same amount of bass, because I actually didn't A, B listen to it. Uh, it's up there. It's like very similar amount of bass, but I think in my opinion, it has a better quality bass for $750. The PSPs are more expensive. Right off the bat, I like the speakers. You said the price was $2,500, right? Yep, for the gloss black finish. Okay, so for $2,500, I think the sound is there. Mm -hmm. First thing I noticed is the sound stage is comparable to the KLH. Okay. Which I absolutely love. The high frequency extension is also very, very good. But there's one thing that I really can't put my finger on it that takes away from its musicality. And I just don't know exactly what it is just yet because it's my first impression, obviously. But one thing that I can say is that when it comes to the bass, you know those like tracks that has like those boom, 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 like doop. I have no idea what the heck that's supposed to mean. So it didn't take long for us to find out what the problem was, but the, at least with the bass. Mm -hmm. um, so you it was, call it a problem, I say it's personality. Okay, uh, okay. Personally, I don't like it. The, the p -p -p sound, mm -hmm. turns out it's the port noise. Yeah. Yeah. When there's a bass note that is at a higher volume with a fast attack, yeah. like, you know, a lot of punch, mm -hmm. you'll hear the port, like the air move out of the port. Yeah. And Jay picks that up and he hears it as it's unnatural, which... Like. I think that this speaker without that port noise produces very controlled bass and it's not just controlled bass, it hits hard in the mid bass as well. It's well extended as well. So all this together reminds me a lot of the original Bocard S400. Now you may be asking, how about compared to the Mark II? How about the Bocard S400 Mark II? Well, no, because the Mark II, like I said, is like the king of the hill right now. Like it was, it was really, really good. And particularly, I can't compare it because the high frequency on the S400 Mark II is just way better. The balance is way better. So don't, don't, don't even go there. Don't expect that much for the speaker. But surprisingly, the mid-range and high frequency and the bass balance is very, very good. You know, not, it's not like the bass overtakes everything. The mid-range is quite nice. The tone is a little bit on the darker side, a little bit on the warmer side. I wouldn't find it like exact or as good as the Triangle Bro 3s. If you like tone, meaning like you really like tone, you know what an instrument sounds like and you must hear it for what it is, then the Triangle is a better choice in this price category. If you have money, totems, as well as fibers, so on. Now, oh, and KLH. But these have a little bit of a tasteful tone to it. It's not a bad thing. It's just that it's not a, my preference with the tone. It has a bit of a warmer tone to it. It rounds it off, gives you a little bit more oomph and bass energy when it comes to tone. And you can get this from listening to bass and drum intro. This is a track I always go to to check tone. And this has a little bit of that warmth added to it, which is not bad, you know, especially on those bass strings. Quite tasteful. When it comes to the high frequency, something a little bit, you know, more wanted there. Now, I'm being picky. It's $750. He's being picky. I am being very, very picky. Let's make that clear. 
It doesn't compare to like Focals, Magicals, Wilson Audios, not even a comparison, or even the Bacardi S400 Mark IIs. However, compared to virtually every other speaker in this category, it probably has the smoothest, most refined high frequency that I've heard. If you want detailed, if you want articulation, that's like more ELAC speakers, right? More audiophile-like detail retrieval in this price category. If you want more rock, like I said, probably clip speakers, right? High frequency and all that. If you want to just listen to multiple genres of music. Yes, where I'm getting at. Because again, like you probably understood by now, this is an all good rounder. Like I'm being very picky with the high frequency quality, but when it comes to the you know, blend of all things, like how it blends and how balanced it is, it's a very well-rounded speaker. And I would not be surprised if this speaker measures neutral with a slight bit of bass bump. So with all that, this sounds great with virtually any track. I mean, I played Sam Smith. Uh, what is the other one that I played? Hotel California. Yeah, you did play Hotel California. <laughs> um, one of my favorite tracks, and I'll list a few in the description as well as on the screen here. But all these tracks have good string, good vocals, good bass energy, sound staging, and imaging. And that has to do with their radiator technology on their tweeter, which is something that you see on like a lot of tweeters these days. But it's to kind of like get that sweet spot going. Now you can read more up on that on the website as well. I'm not gonna go into further explaining it. But basically what the speaker does is it allows to have good bass control because of that rigid bass, you know, driver configuration and structure. At the same time, have a very nice dispersion of sound because of that tweeter radiator design that allows for a very nice balanced sweet spot. That means that if I'm listening by myself, it's good. If I'm listening with a friend like Tujin or friends, it's good that I don't have, it's good. If you have friends, that's good as well. And if this is not obvious to you, if you want a larger sweet spot, you want to have the speakers towed out to the room, not towed in so that you get a larger sweet spot. If you are sitting by yourself in one single spot, I found that towing them in does give you a more pinpoint center imaging. However, this imaging, like the center imaging is good regardless in my opinion. It's not as distinct as like what, what like the Bacardi S400 Mark II or like the KOH or speakers that cost more, but it has decent imaging. I feel like it's pretty, you know, pretty like edged out, uh, pretty pinpoint, but I just feel like it, it's slightly at times like not as distinct as like DKLH or the Bacardi S400 Mark II, but that's given considering this is a $750 speaker again, being pickier again. When it comes to the sound staging, like again, it's not as large as the Bacardi S400 Mark II or Sonos Fabers or Wilson's, like these are again, higher end speakers. Tujin's just looking at me like, what, what, is the, what are these comparisons, right? <laughs> yeah. Or, or, or... He's so spoiled. Or, Kush RP600M. Those have there a bigger go. sound stage, but they don't have good imaging because, you know, it's horn design. It's very diffused. It's very diffused. Um, but the whole point here is that it had, again, it's a good rounder when it comes to sound staging and imaging as well. Now, when it comes to the wall behind it, which is the big factor in people's lives, right? I tested this with four feet, three to four feet out into the room. Gave me very good sound staging and depth perception. However, I kind of liked it a little bit towards the wall more. Like I liked it about 1.5 feet. That's awfully precise. Mm -hmm. I measured it obviously with a tape measure, but everyone should have one of these. 1.5 feet from the wall behind it and that I preferred it because it gave me more bass. Now people often like associate port and like that bass added bass yeah. as a bad thing. And it is when it's boomy and uncontrolled and nasty and ports do have that kind of uh, reputation. You, yeah, if you abuse them. Yeah, but it's not, it's not always a fat, you know, disgusting bass, you know, when you, when you set it up right. Like the whole, dynamic of putting the speaker a certain distance from the wall is there because the port designs are made to allow you to have more bass extension and amount depending on the room. So when set up right, this has really good port technology. Like I said, they have this whole technology going on to get rid of port noises, really good controlled bass, really good amount of bass, just control 
uh, based on distance, how much you want it. It's kind of like a tone control, I guess, but you do it with setup, which is always better. <laughs> I like saying that. And more work. <clears throat> Say that again. And more work. You're really You're good. so lazy. Now when it comes to gear matching, well, these are 86 dB in sensitivity, which means they're not, you know, they're, they're on the difficult side of things when it comes to driving it, which would have been a big no-no for me and kind of like a bummer uh, when it came to budget speakers in the past. But today, I see a lot of like affordable gear that has a tremendous amount of power for cheap, like Iota VX, um, Music a Fidelity, NAD, name a few, NAD, SMSL. There's, there's a lot. There's a lot. There, there is just, just brain, so much. I'm just brain farting, but like just search it up and Orega is one as well. Denon. Anyways, there's a lot. And these are, you know, quite good with those kind of gear as well but they do stack up tremendously when you go to higher end gear. The more you spend money on the application and take care into your setup, these will reward you heavily, which is not a bad thing because these sound good with budget gear, but they just sound better as you upgrade, which is what you want because you don't want your speakers to be the bottleneck, right? If your speakers sound the same with higher end gear and you know AV receivers, that probably means your speakers are pretty low in that scaling category, scalability. Sca scalability. So that's not what you want. So that's a good thing for the poke. Now, you do need some power, which means that my preference with these were solid states. Not only because solid states tend to give you more power in the market, but also because it has better control when it comes to the base region. Now, I did try these with tube amplifiers. Now with tube amplifiers, price do go up tremendously high when it comes to high power tube amplifiers. And low power tube amplifiers can work with the pokes. It's just that you're not gonna be able to crank it up as loud. And also the bass control is going to lack way more, not just a little, way more than if you were using a solid state amplifier. However, you may prefer a tube amplifier if you are in for that little bit more of a sound stage and holographic sound and that's in a high frequency sweetness and mid-range tone. That is definitely there when you play tracks like the Society of Bass test track, which you know goes like doom 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 and then you can like depict where it lands. If you know what I mean. If you don't play it, play the track and, and then come back. Pause the video, come back. I'll wait. Anyways, when it comes to the sound staging and the sweetness and overall mid-range and high frequency quality and sound staging, tubes do definitely win. But overall, again, the whole reason you get the poke speakers, the, the all-roundedness from bass to treble is more evident and more pronounced with solid state amplifiers. So I would just go with solid state amplifiers if I were to get the pokes. So who is the speaker for? Let's talk about that. If you have not already gotten that, out of the video. Uh, should you drop your money right now and buy these because it is the best thing ever? Probably not. There are other options like I said, Eli's Klipsch, you know, Kef, depending on what you want. And we've specified some of these strengths of each speaker in this video. But if you are a beginner getting into this and you want a all-rounder speaker and you've heard a rave of Bacard S400s, but those are just a little bit too much to spend your hard-earned money, then this is what I would choose. And certainly, if you looked at ELAC speakers and you were like, huh, but I'm afraid what they're talking about the high frequency, what if, what if I don't like the high frequency? And I, I like a little bit more bass, I'm a bass head. These. So yeah, that's pretty much it. If you like this video, click that like button and subscribe for more videos in the future. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.